got up the range. Gonna hit some balls and talk about um, like swing stuff that's going on at the moment in a minute when I can get in a studio, Steve's coaching in, in there at the moment. An update on the on the neck problem. Um, two chiropractor sessions down now and I've got no pain at all in my neck. It was a little strain which obviously healed itself um, and he's done some massage and um, reset, did a little reset of the, of the neck um, and back as well. I also mentioned when I was there that I feel like I didn't have much um, mobility when I was squatting and it felt like my right toe always goes out. So we put him through um, a few different tests. Turned out that there's a muscle which is right at the top of your ass, um, glutes I should say, right at the, like the top right of it, well it's the top right one that's causing me problems. I mean, you're saying that was just really weak. And the goal swing stuff, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is early extension, which I've always struggled with, basically worked out because he's he's also TPI. He worked out that the weakness in here wasn't allowing me to actually sit into sit into the squat and rotate in the squat, so it pushes me towards um, towards early extension, um, trying to as your body's trying to find like the strong point. So I'm going away from the weak area, trying to get to the strong point, and that's one of the reasons basically why I've always struggled with early extension. So yeah, I'm gonna hit some balls now um, and then discuss that when we get in the studio where I can actually show you what's going on. Right, this is where the vlog gets a bit technical for the uh, technical people out there they are interested in golf swing. This is a very brief explanation of what's going on with the golf swing at the moment. So this swing on the right is a somewhat natural feeling golf swing. So I'm just swinging a golf club. The swing on the left is more of what I'm trying to do and trying to work into my actual proper natural pattern. So I want this to be this in the end basically. So. I'm highlighting a few things, so we're going to start with down our line view. The main thing you're going to see here is, if we go on the right screen, watch how I lose height. Okay, I've only lost a bit there, I've actually been working on this quite a bit over the last few days, so my natural swing has definitely got a bit better. Um, but whereas before I was literally down here losing quite a lot of height in the backswing, the next thing is watch this here so if you're not early extending you're going to stay on the line through impact so i lose height and then i go towards and that is not horrific so if you go about six months i would have probably been about here which is a massive early extension um, early extension basically leads to having to throw the golf club because when you early extend you stand up you basically gain um, a bit of height so your hands are further away from the ball which means you have to chuck it chuck it down the line that is way better than it was but definitely not where we want to be and that that exits actually pretty decent there so that's a natural feeling goal swing at the moment right moving on to what I'm trying to feel I'm trying to actually feel like my spine's extend extending a bit more in the backswing so I'm maintaining height as a much better position see so your hands a bit higher the right elbow still somewhat tucked it's not flying too much that's absolutely fine um, and then this is a much better action where I'm actually squatting using the ground and posting up a bit closer as you can see for impact a bit closer to that line um, the lower I go the more um, I can get the hands sort of like in front of the body keeping them in front of the body and not have to chuck them still not exactly where I want it to be but that swing is better and the biggest improvement is one you're going to see uh, front on. So this angle is actually the the area that needs the most improvement I feel and another reason as to why I early extend. So this is an actual feeling movement on the right. Look how much movement there is laterally. So my head gets off a lot. My spine angle is sort of like I get my chest over my right knee instead of extending my spine. That leads to then what you've got to do is obviously you've got to get, got to get back on it. Um, so that combined, so losing a bit of height, getting off of it, early extending, and then having to release the hands leads to you know adding a bit of loft, and then it's just not very consistent movement. Like I said, it's got a lot better, it still needs a lot of work. So this is the movement where I'm trying to, I'll give you a feel in a minute. Basically what I'm trying to do is trying to feel like I'm starting a lawnmower with my right arm, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, so you shouldn't see much movement at all here. There is still a tiny bit of movement, but for me, this is just miles ahead of where it needs to be. And then look at the squat and the knees, what they do here. That's a much more powerful position, rather than getting way off of it 
and then the knees sort of like buckling together and then just extending towards the ball. Whereas this one, yeah, still not where it needs to be, but that is a big improvement. Impact positions, miles per. Alright guys, let's film one more. This is a massive exaggeration for me. It's feeling like the spine's extending. Hang on, let's get this in the right spot. This is, again, just way better again. There you go, it's hardly moving. It's a tiny bit off there. Much better spine extension and that's miles better. Look at that. Leading with the hands. So just to clear this up as well, um, there is method to the madness right it's, i'm not just trying to change my golf swing for aesthetic purposes the reason that i'm trying to get less extendy flippy is just because you've got less club face rotation and i've said that from day one i'm trying to get rid of excess club face rotation obviously that takes a lot more timing and trying to you know time square club face when you're swinging it fast is just very hard to do so those movements help me actually maintain a square club face because i'm not you know flipping it not moving off the ball means less lateral slide, which means, again, less timing issues. And the other thing um, from doing this, from trying to get in a better impact position, I'm nowhere near. If you look at Cameron Champ, um, the position he gets in through impact, you watch how he holds onto the glove face. Because of how he moves in the downswing, he can get in a position where he's like leading with the hands and just like holding the club face through impact, which is not only a powerful way to hit it, There'll probably be quite a few like amateurs that don't hit a long way that want to try and hit it higher, which is a way of hitting it further if you're like slightly low on speed. When your speeds go up, if you can get, if you can start delofting the face and getting the ball moving out lower, not only are you going to hit your irons lower, more penetrating, and slightly further through the bag. I always hit my drives furthest when it's going out low because it reduces the spin loft. Like less of this means less spin loft, which means less spin. So if you can get it launching fairly low with low spin, it just goes a long way, and also it just goes less offline. Not only that, when you're launching the ball lower with your irons you gain a lot more control because it's one thing i'm still struggling with when the wind gets up i have to hit a lot of knockdown shots and club down quite a bit when it's into wind and that's just because i hit it quite high with a lot of spin so the more i can get my dynamic loft down basically going to mean i'm going to have less variations in the golf swings that i'm making on the course as a 50 mile an hour, 15 mile an hour wind at the moment means i'm sort of like clubbing down two and hitting it soft but if I'm getting it launching low on a better trajectory, 15 mile an hour wind may just mean, right, let's club up one, make the exact same golf swing because it's not gonna spin up and get flary in the wind. So there's a lot of reasons why I'm sort of trying to move towards this. When I take it to the golf course, mind, I'm not thinking about all these things. I'm rehearsing the feels and I'm stepping in and I'm executing. So yeah, little, um, little recap, anyway. This is it, trip up to um Firstly, we're going to Bowood in uh, in Wiltshire to meet Rich Woods and uh, do some practice, and then heading over for walking the course, for walking the course, to walk the course. So let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, are you? Play this with 50. Well, I played it with 54, but if I played it with 50... Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what you got. What are you aiming? Um, same flag. Same flag. Come on then. Zoom this one if you like. No, I can't. <laughs> I mean, that's some camera work there. <laughs> <laughs> All in the Japanese whip. The beast. They call it. This is um. Has it got a button to? No. Huh. no? <laughs> All manual in here, Fast mate. It's a real 76. car. Yeah. Am I getting in there? Am I? Yeah, you are. Yeah, Terrific. we're gonna have to make room. <laughs> right. To uh, where are we going? Salisbury. Salisbury and West. Salt Wiltshire. Salisbury and South Wiltshire. Well, oh yeah, don't go from the roll now. No one swear, mate. It's the camera's oh. off. <laughs> Not allowed to swear. Hello. Right. So we just uh, parked at a car park five minutes down the road from our hotel which is uh called the what it's a weather spoons it's it's called weather spoons we're allowed to call it weather spoons is that allowed <laughs> yeah you said the hotel brands are available um what is the hotel called um, i don't know weather spoons hotel they just said you have to park five minutes down the road and then walk down the river or next to it actually um through a very dodgy estate it isn't as bad as the other week though in uh smithwick smithwick wherever i was in Birmingham. So me and Steve, I've booked the accommodation for me and Steve Surrey. First week I've booked it. <laughs> We've got to the Jamiga place, we got to the event, and I went in and the guys were like sitting there, like the Jamiga guys, and they were like, oh, where, where, where are you staying? Are you staying at the hotel? I was like, no, nope. booked somewhere, you know, booked uh, one, of these, <laughs> one of these places local. He's like, not Smithwick, is it? And I was like, uh, let me just look. Yep, it is. Oh, you don't want to go there. Love it. On the river. On the river, they're mad dead. Look at that with the church through the thing. It's like being in Rome. Rome that is a, a full with a few food. shopping trolleys and tramps piss. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Here we are. Right, we are in the room. I've, uh, what have we just had? Curry night. Curry night. Look at, Joyous. look at this guy. This is all right, isn't it? Dessert. It was 9.01 we went to order desserts. So uh, it's all good because Rich has got off. I've got a multi-pack millionaire's cheesecake. How many have you got in there? One. I've got one left. <laughs> <laughs> How many was there? Three. <laughs> Actually really good walking across. I played this course in Pram like eight years ago when I was a PJ member before. Um, it's in a really, really good condition. Uh, flags are tucked as usual for Pro-Am um, and we are forecast. So Metoff is saying it was going to gust at like 42. BBC is saying it's the same. So apparently 8 o'clock in the morning I'm teeing off at 8.20 and Rich is teeing off at like 9, what 9.20? Yeah, 9.20. Yeah. yeah, so when we go off I think it's going to be blowing around 16 to 20 and then for the afternoon it's going to be gusting in the 40s so we've got a big advantage actually got a good chance of doing well here so we're just going to go out i've hitting balls earlier at bowwood i was just focusing on trying to hit like a low flat one which i'm going to be using all of tomorrow because i knew it's going to be windy any uh thoughts on the golf course today looks great does don't it? yeah i think just got to pick your pick your, your starting lines well and um i don't think you need to be massively aggressive to be fair no um i think if you the long holes you can kind of land it quite short and get it scooting down to the same place you're going to be hitting hitting driver anyway so i think, I think james's call are two irons are, are yeah shout. i'm literally hitting driver once mm. um and that is and that is it but great condition wasn't it oh that's amazing look really really top notch yeah um, and greens look good they look pretty flat didn't they, they yeah weren't, pretty they flat weren't, um, crazy, crazy breaks, but sometimes that can be tricky in itself. Yeah, little subtle ones. Mm. So yeah, this is the situation. Just chilling. I've got that. Has anyone tried that? Out Pro yogurt thing, uh, vanilla, amazing. And uh, we've got Die Hard with a Vengeance. 
What's your favourite Die Hard fan? Die, what's your favourite Die Hard film of the... Well, they've done loads, haven't they? It's four now, isn't it? So it's Die Hard 1, Die Hard 2. Die Hard 2 was rubbish. That was the one where we were, like, running around in the snow. Die Hard 3 with a Vengeance with Samuel... Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson is, I think, the best one. Which, the one, which is the one with Alan Rickman? You, now you have a machine gun. <laughs> her, her, her. That is Die Hard 1. Hans Gruber played by Alan Rickman um, and his group of German terrorists. That is a cracking film. Hijacking the Nakatomi Plaza. You wouldn't know it's one sorry, of my, sorry? You wouldn't know it's one of my favourite films, would you? Hijacking the Nakatomi Plaza. At the Nakatomi Plaza, where it all kicks off. So that's it. We will um, check in tomorrow after the round and I'll let you know it's gone, talk you through it and then Rich will talk you through his round as well. Here comes, here comes the dog. Yeah. Um, right, so just got back from, well, I haven't just got back, got back from that event a few days ago. Um, I had a dentist appointment, getting too felt, but it literally took like f an hour and a half to get the too felt, they had to like get into it, split the root in half because it was all curved over and then just cut away so I've got like a massive hole in my mouth. Um, so I've been on like soups all weekend. And yeah, it's now Monday. Um, so just looking forward to getting out on the golf course again this week. But anyway, so this event last week, um, it's just getting to play bad. Again, I had like three hours sleep the night before. Actually got DQ'd from the event for taking too long to look for my ball. Um, not a bit mad, I was like nine over, had an awful day. It was like, when I say it was windy, it was ridiculous. It was like blowing at 40. It was like gusting mid 40s. Um, winning score was one under, which shows he was playing tough. Yeah, got TQ'd for taking too long to look for the ball, basically. I went up ahead of my guys, um, ahead of the, the team, was already having a brief look. Then they came over, looked around, and then I said, right, call and provisional, run back to the tee while you still look. They found it as I started running. So I went back, played it. I didn't time it, which is what you've got to do. Um, didn't really know how long it'd been. And also you've got to be really specified. So when I used to play tournaments, it used to be five minutes and used to feel like an attorney. But now three minutes actually goes by quicker than you think. So what I'll be doing in the future is, if, especially if you're playing programs, you've got to make sure that you say, right, we're looking for my ball now, um, just in case. Um, you get called up on it because obviously you don't want to. You don't want to go over the three minutes. And you don't want to get pulled up on anything like that. But to cover yourself and just to be sure, you've got to literally be like, right, we're looking for my ball now. Get everyone to look for it at the same time. Put the time on before that, so you've got three minutes and you and you like documenting it so you know exactly what your time frame is. So if anyone says, oh, you took a long time, you'd be like, look, it was three minutes or just under three minutes. Timed it. Here we go. But just getting used to, I guess, playing tournament golf game with slightly new rules. It didn't matter. I was nowhere near the money. What I have realised though is, um, again, I keep doing this. What are you doing? What are you doing? So my my golf swing definitely could be a bit better, and it's still obviously worth moving towards you know improving your technique. But what I don't do is still what I don't do is manage to have a golf swing that I can rely on week to week. It almost the swing feels and the swing itself changes almost from week to week so I'm not drilling something out and having something to rely on Daisy it's almost like I'm a new golfer each week the other thing the other thing I don't do enough is actually play golf like that was my first competitive round since the last competitive round we got an injury Daisy don't And it's something that I've been guilty of the whole time. Like I'm attached to a driving range, so I'm, a, I'm at Clifton Hill. That's where I practice. I hit balls up there. I was doing a bit of chipping and putting at the uni until they kicked me out, and I'm not allowed to be there apparently because I'm not a uni student. So at the moment, I don't play golf apart from competitions, which is just I'm doing it the the complete way wrong. I'm doing it the complete wrong way round. So that's another thing I'm gonna to try to sort out now is a place where I can play, so I can play more than I practice. Yes, hit a few balls, maybe try and work some new stuff into the swing, but then go out and play golf and just get used to shooting good scores. So you're not going out in a tournament round having like not played for weeks 
and expecting to turn up and play well it just doesn't work like that but like i said this is this is a long process sorry it's a long process it's um going to take some time to work out what works best um i'm learning each week and we're getting there um so nowhere near um i know i sound pretty dejected right now but i just feel a bit shitty from not being able to eat anything but leek and potato soup all weekend so yeah that's the plan find a golf course get out play lots of golf get shooting some good scores um keep you know keep everything sharp by doing some practice but mainly play golf speaking of playing golf um tomorrow going to Cumberwell to play with steve sorry 18 holes and then we're meeting one of his one of his friends up there who's like doesn't hardly play but it's got like a 208 ball speed so i'm going to take a long drive driver we're going to have a go that'd be a fun video then thursday and thursday hoping to play with leon and his brother so both the frickers which would be really good and then friday going to hopefully be playing will farley so lots of course vlogs coming up i said i wanted to get out and just play as much as possible now i'm going to try and take my cameraman along and film like serious golf but obviously keeping it fairly light at the same time right anyway another episode done jamaica's off um so i've got one tournament coming up in two weeks so i think we'll restart the series getting ready for that event um but yeah loads of content coming up see you soon